Hello everyone, welcome back to uh, another Matt Lown Kerbal Space Program video. Um, I sounded really uncertain in that intro, didn't I? It, it almost sounds like I've never done one of these commentaries before. I've never really played this game all that often, but I did play it last week. Uh, I did a video last week in which I said that my, uh, my low Kerbin orbit space station, or I guess I should say my main space station in low Kerbin orbit, because of course there are two, but one of them we don't talk about. Uh, the main one, uh, I mentioned last week that it's got a bit of a design flaw. Basically, the actual design of the space station uh, consists of two counter-rotating gravity rings, and then there are some docking ports that ships can dock to, uh, in between the two gravity rings. However, the design flaw that I'm kind of talking about is that these docking arms don't extend beyond the diameter of the gravity rings themselves. So if you're docking, uh, I guess, head-on, like imagine how the Apollo module docked to things. It would dock using the top of its craft. So basically, it's a very narrow profile. Docking like that would be fine for these docking ports, but anything wide, such as a space shuttle or a space plane, they would basically be too wide to attach to the docking port because uh, the wingspan or whatever would just hit the gravity rings. It's not really ideal. So we need to correct this. That's what I'm going to do in this video. I'm going to dock an extension to one of the docking arms of the gravity ring space station, meaning that now the docking arm will extend beyond the diameter of the gravity rings, meaning that any ship of any dimension um, would be able to dock easily with it, unless it was like a really obscurely designed ship. I know, I appreciate that. You don't have to comment below, guys. Uh, I'm just saying most ships realistically would be able to dock just fine. Now, I thought it might be a bit boring of a video to just add one small little docking arm extension, so I thought I'd also add this, well, part of what you can see here, uh, that Mark II fuselage type thing that's now, it's now gone, but it's an exposed experiment bay. On the Real Life International Space Station, you may have heard of it, there is a Japanese module which is an expo, it's basically like a science lab exposed to the vacuum of space, and it's really, really cool. It's a very, very, uh, it's very cool. Is that a pun? Because it's in space. By the way, here we are on the map screen before I start rambling about the ISS. Uh, just waiting for a good point to launch. I'm actually, you can kind of see the space station we're trying to dock with. Uh, I, so I'm going to launch just before it passes over the Kerbal Space Center. Here is our rocket as well. Don't really need to say much more about that because you just saw me build it. Anyway, uh, yes, the, uh, the, Jap the Japanese module on the International Space Station is like this big platform that extends uh, it's, in the, it's, it's exposed to the vacuum of space effectively and there are experiment packages on board and like a robot arm that can like manipulate the experiments. I thought it would be kind of cool to have a, a sort of a equivalent uh, structure on my space station. Although I feel it's a bit of an upgrade because if we need to um, you know, pressurize the actual experiments and maybe you know have a, can be, have a Kerbal able to access them without a space helmet on, we can actually close a set of cargo bay doors and then we can they're no longer exposed to space effectively. So it's a bit more, it's a bit better for maintenance purposes, I guess. I don't know. I think in reality, I just like the idea that I can just close the, the bays at will if I, want, if I wanted to. And similar, similarly to the ISS, we've got a little robot arm. It doesn't do anything. It's non-functional, but it's just there to kind of add a nice little aesthetic flavor to the experiment bay. And you may have seen me br uh, programming a CAL controller. So I've got a little action group. I can just press uh, zero on my keyboard. It runs through a little thing where the robot arm extends out, goes and looks at some of the experiments, and then retracts back again. So you can enjoy that, hopefully. When, when we get to that part of the video, I skipped over the um, CAL controller programming sequence because it's quite boring to watch. Now, as you can see on screen in the video, hopefully, <laughs> uh, you can see we are well underway with our second stage burn as we deploy the fairings just there. Uh, now, I did put a bit too much Delta V in our upper stage. To be honest, I wasn't actually planning on doing the mission at this point uh, in during filming. Uh, I was just doing a test of the launch vehicle to make sure it worked. And then I was like, you know what? This is going fine. I might, I may as well just this can just be the actual mission now. So uh, uh, as, as such, I didn't do any refining. Basically, what you saw me build in the space plane, um, in the vehicle assembly building, sorry, that was just me d doing a rough first draft of the rocket that then became, that, that that's what I ended up using. So we d I didn't do any sort of testing or refinement to try and optimize our fuel levels. So we do have a bit too much, but really it's fine. And we're going to be recovering this stage anyway. It's got the means to deorbit itself. Once we've uh, unloaded the cargo, as in those two 
space station modules, so it's good to have a bit of extra fuel so it can land itself and make sure it doesn't get destroyed on impact. Uh, now, the space station will be appearing momentarily. There it is. <laughs> and, um... Yeah, I don't know if I should have talked about the actual rendezvous process, but I feel like the video did a fairly good job in highlighting what was going on. If you want a docking tutorial, then um, there are really good ones out there. I always recommend Scott Manley's, to be honest. It's a bit of an old video now, but it still it stands the test of time. The principle of docking hasn't changed, um, so I recommend that one. Um, and I, I wouldn't really try and emulate the style of docking I went with in this video because I... I got our encounter with the space station before completing one orbit, which is great because it means, you know, the mission can be nice and punchy, the video doesn't drag on too long, uh, but it's more difficult to do if you've never really done docking before. So don't try and uh, <laughs> do things as quickly as I did in this video. We're just trying to get to the uh, the fun part of the mission, which is just uh, uh, adding these expansion modules to the space station itself. So we're adding a cur well, I've got one of the Kerbals from the station. I've boarded him onto the docking arm extension because while it's got a command pod there, it doesn't have a probe core, so it needs a Kerbal on board to control. The other module, the um, what I've sort of uh, unofficially called the banana module, because uh, looks a bit like a banana in it. Uh, but that module does have that one does have a probe core, so you don't need a Kerbal on that one. So, uh, I'm now going to move our extension arm to the space station. So, originally, my plan was to dock this to that shielded docking port uh, in between the two gravity rings. But then I noticed that there's actually no passageway from the docking port to the main body of the space station. There's a service bay that's got a Science Junior inside it. Uh, so, I thought, for realism's sake, let's use this docking port here. Because this is actually... The docking port directly attaches to a crew module that then doesn't have anything blocking it to get to the main station. I know it doesn't really matter in Kerbal Space Program because Kerbals can transfer through anything. They can transfer through claws, I think. But just from like a realism standpoint, I mean, ultimately, space stations are pretty pointless things to build in Kerbal Space Program. I guess they work well as refueling pods and stuff, but certainly space stations of this nature are completely pointless in Kerbal Space Program. So I thought if we're going to be going for the aesthetics anyway, we may as well try and be realistic about it at the same time. And there we are. We are docked. We have our new um, space station docking arm extension all done. And now hopefully now, if I didn't do a very good job explaining what I was, uh, why we needed to add the extension, hopefully now it's, it, it is illustrated for you. Uh, before it didn't, the uh, the original docking arm didn't extend beyond the diameter of those gravity rings. So you can see how a, a ship with wide wings or just a wide diameter body uh, wouldn't really fit without hitting the station. So that's all sorted now. Now I know that there was always the possibility of just being on a dock to the orange fuel tank, but similarly to what I was saying earlier, I quite like it there to be a system where Kerbals could just directly leave their ship and realistically transfer to the space station. And it wouldn't be that realistic to directly transfer if the ship is docked to the orange tank, because that would mean uh, the Kerbal has to swim through a pressurized fuel tank to get to the space station, which it wouldn't be ideal, really. Not very safe. So here we are docking the banana module to the uh, the space station here. A little bit tricky to do. With the, there's no stock docking port alignment system, so uh, you kind of have to eyeball it. I'm kind of used to docking without aids at this point, but a lot of my uh, Kerbal Space Program contemporaries recommend mods like docking port alignment indicators. So if you're having a, prob a real... Uh, problem performing docking, then you could always try that. Unfortunately, uh, for this mission, the, uh, in air quotes, loud lazy method of docking doesn't really work because uh, for either of the ships, really, I can't really, I don't really want to move the space station to align its docking port because that's not very realistic. And the banana module, we're not, the docking port isn't placed along its center of mass, so the actual auto alignment thing doesn't really work quite so well. Anyway, here you can see me landing our second stage. As you can see, it didn't mess it up at all. It landed and it was fine. So we can now fade across back to the space station. And uh, there it is, actually. Uh, the gravity rings look like they're spinning very, very fast. Uh, too fast, really, for realistic uh, internal gravity. But that's only because the footage is currently playing back at double normal speed. Just because it makes the frame rate a little bit nicer for you guys. It was, chug it was chugging a bit. Uh, when filming this in real life. And there is the docking arm, by the way. Oop, <laughs> not docking arm, sorry, robot arm. So yeah, it just sort of swings out, spins around, extends down to look at the gravioli experiment before then uh, retracting back. It's not, it's just a bit of fun, really. I thought it added a nice little visual touch to the actual appearance of this. Now we can actually open the bay doors again and extend the uh, the magnetometer boom. 
And uh, just, uh, I, I thought I'd just leave the docking arm in an orientation that looks like it's busy working away. At the end of the day, this space station is here to serve as like a sort of a model train set, really. Like, it's completely non-functional. So let's just leave things looking in a nice orientation. But yeah, I mean, I, I guess there's not really much more to say. The mission is complete. I guess uh, space station missions like this are pretty short because you have to worry about returning to the Kerbal Space Center or indeed returning back to Kerbin at all, really. So there's not much more for me to really discuss in today's video. What I will do, though, is uh, show you an epic fail that happened. The space station got destroyed by the Kraken. Basically, my plan was to use the uh, the new in-situ repair tool thing that engineer Kerbals can do where they can build stuff uh, on EVA. My plan was to place a junior-sized docking port on our new space station docking arm extension module uh, because it currently only got a regular-sized docking port on it. However, um, whilst I was able to attach the junior-sized docking port, the station did become a little bit unstable. I'm crossfading to uh, w what happened. I then decided I would try and remove the RCS blocks from the docking arm because they look a little bit messy. They clutter it up a little bit and we don't need them anymore since it's I have no plans on removing it from the space station. But as you can see, a Kraken wasn't too happy. Every time I modified this module in some way, caused some oscillations throughout the space station. And I thought... Oh, everything seems like it's still in one piece. It's fine. Uh, but then if you look closer at that lower uh, gravity ring, it seems to be getting further and further away from us. And I realized the extent of the damage when I boarded in the camera zoomed out. And yes, uh, the space station has been severed. So, um, whoops. So I luckily, I generally make quick saves quite a lot in Kerbal Space Program mainly so I can go back and get thumbnail shots from any point in the mission, but also to safeguard against Kraken attacks like this. Uh, but when I reloaded the quick save, the junior docking port was no longer on the space station extension arm. So, uh, and that's that was that. I thought that was just a fun little inclusion to uh, put at the end of this video. Now there are links on screen to more videos. I hope you enjoy those, and if you want to check out stuff in the description, you can. If you enjoyed this video, then leaving a like down below really helps me out in the algorithm. Sorry if I've been a bit more droney than normal. I've got a bit of a sore throat. But I should be better next week, so uh, that's it. Goodbye. <laughs>